hoping you all had a wonderful week, as wonderful as it can be. And I'm happy to be back this week with a new friend to add to our friendship circle and a new background. Hello. Um, so this sweet girl that I have on here today is an actress, model, best-selling author, and the CEO of Grey Inc. Not to mention one of my biggest inspirations. So please help me welcome Grace Weather. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. You look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. As always. <laughs> thank you. How is your quarantine? I know you're you've been a little bit tired lately. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a really interesting time, I think, especially for the film industry because a lot of things are still actually going full force right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, you know, pre-production to our job and a lot of planning. So, I feel like I've been actually super busy with work, even more so than when we're like out filming things for real. So, I got a I got a little bit of a break in the beginning, which was nice, but now it's it's back to work. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I I've, I've kind of been in that little area as well just because at first it was so hard to get used to everything and yeah. it was like okay you know what let's just make it into a break let's let's yeah. all rest let's let's all be good for a second I, I thought that was great but now it is almost everyone just wanting not everyone but almost everyone wanting to get back to work and doing art and doing productive things and staying productive somehow um but i mean now that we are talking about staying productive you are the first person i would ask for tips on how to stay productive and avoid procrastination oh, how do wow. you do you set up alarms do you have a, a like a whiteboard <laughs> like what do you do I, I do have a whiteboard believe it or not i have a huge whiteboard but i think for me i think managing everything and balancing everything really took time to learn how to do it. Especially, I know we might talk about, you know, my personal life journey a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, balancing health and work has always been something that's really important to me and mm -hmm. has definitely been a learning curve, learning when to say no and learning when to say I need a break and I need to yeah. step back for a second. It, it's something that's really hard, especially when your job is your passion and when you love what yeah. you do every day, it's so easy to work 24 hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> I think learning that balance and just realizing when my body needs to step back, it's been, it's, it's, it's my best tip to be productive because when you're overworking yourself, nothing you do turns out perfect yeah. or good. So yeah, stepping back, reevaluating, and then going back into it. That's like my process. A hundred percent. Yeah. I feel like I've been trying so hard to find that good balance between working yeah. and being, being productive and feeling I, I, like I really took advantage of my day and versus, you know, Oh my God, I did nothing. I, I just, I, I whoop, just spent the whole day resting and I didn't do anything that I wanted to do. So I, just, I don't know. I've been battling with that. I think in the beginning, I was so excited for a break because I do overwork myself. I do strive for over perfectionism. And so it was nice. But then now it's like trying to find it's hard. I feel like sometimes to kind of have time management when you're, you know, your environment is very the same throughout the day, you know, just the yeah. same four walls. And it's almost like, especially if you're like me and you like having your little neon lights on, you know, you don't have your window open to see what time it is during the day. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm definitely going to start, I don't know, just organizing my schedule a little better. So I feel like I'm not pushing, but I am. Yeah. And I, I think it's a lifelong lesson because you're in different phases, you know, throughout your life, you'll be handling different things, you know, mm -hmm. whatever phase you're currently in. I think it's something you have to forever learn how to adapt and be flexible to open like, like those different doors and forever knowing, you know, your needs and wants as a person evolve too. So yeah, yeah I think it's something you don't necessarily master ever, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> difficult, but yeah. it's, it's part of the process. It's part of the fun. And we're very lucky that we love what we do. So we don't have to, you know, have a life that we don't love every day. So exactly. very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's start from the beginning for us. I mean, we met at something that we love. We met at a panel for LA Fashion Week. I think like Yes. Two, three years ago and my grandma and I got to hear this beautiful girl's story about her battle with cancer and what it means to be and feel like a survivor now you have a very unique story that I mean I would love to share with everyone would you like to kind of take us through yeah. the world a bit 
Yes. Yeah, I was I was actually I was trying to think about how we met because I thought that might come up. And I was like, oh, I remember how I met Lil Lamar. I sat on a stage by myself <laughs> crying in front of her. And I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot that that's like how we met. I was like, oh, uh, but so yeah, Lil Lamar's first impression of me was me crying on a stage in front of like 200 people by myself, oh. sitting on a bar stool with a microphone but yeah so a little bit about my story um so I grew up in Minnesota and I was always a very active kid I loved dance musical theater I was always like a film kid from the start um and when I wasn't at school I was making iMovie films on my laptop that were um, <laughs> really bad but I still love doing them um and then when I was 13 years old I started getting really sick and tired and I just didn't want to do the things that I loved anymore which was like the biggest problem um because a lot of people were like she's just a teenager she's tired she's depressed she's making it up for attention and my mm. mom was like so oh, my kid is the most passionate creative kid that I know and her not wanting to spend every day doing those things there's something really wrong mm. um, and so I spent about six months going to dozens of doctors and they did so many tests so many blood draws everything they tilted me on tables upside down to see if they could make me pass out like it was a whole, oh, whole wow. experience but um after about six months in the hematology and oncology department because mm. some of my blood work had come back off um one day i was like i have a headache and they were like let's do a scan today just to see if there is anything um and i did an mri on january 9th of 2015 and about an hour after i got out of the mri machine they're like you have to come back we found something on the scan so it was that day when I was 13 that I was diagnosed with a brainstem glioma, which is a tumor in the deepest part of the brain called the pons. It's right at the top of your spinal cord, right mm. back in the center, um, which unfortunately makes it really hard to operate on. And it's not something they usually do. Um, and chemotherapy and radiation also have a very slim chance of working on these types of tumors because they're inside the blood brain barrier. So that's a lot of science for you. But yeah, basically, but it's very important to know. Yeah, basically what that means is kids with tumors in that part of the brain usually have a not a great life expectation due to the lack of treatment. Um, so I was given an 8% chance of survival for six months that day. And for me, you know, my journey was very unique because where most people the day they find out they have a brain tumor or any type of cancer or illness, that's their first day in the hospital. You know, they're checked in and their life has changed that day forever. Yeah. But for me... I had been a part of this hospital experience for over six months. And so this diagnosis was the day I checked out of the hospital because there was nothing medically they could do to help me. So, wow. um, that was the day my mom, you know, I went home and we had no next steps from the doctors. So my mom was like, okay, we had make these next steps ourselves. And I'd always wanted to be in LA doing things that I loved every day. And my mom's like, okay, if you really only have six months, we're going to make every day the best day possible. And we rented an apartment over the phone, which I don't recommend, no. but we did it. <laughs> I moved out here um, when I was 13 and just started living every day to the fullest. And it's been five years now. Um, I still have my tumor, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's just something I have to fight every day. It's stable. So I'm extremely lucky. And I now, you know, I try to be a voice for others in the community who don't have a voice of their own because I've lost so many friends over the past five years, um, close friends, close to my age with the same type of tumor. So I can't tell you why I'm still here and why I'm still fighting and why I have this voice I do. But I, I take that as a very big responsibility to, you know, be, be a person who can raise awareness for those who don't have the opportunity to do so anymore. So that's yeah. my, my medical journey and how I ended up out here in the first place. <laughs> no, and I think the beautiful thing is that, you know, we, we, we have to kind of take in this information and take something so big and kind of decide for ourselves, you know, what do we do now? You know, how do we make, how, where's the silver lining? You know what I mean? How do yeah. we make this into something that's not you know, you don't want it to be completely destructive for you. You want that chance to, you know, like you said, you wanted to move out to LA. You wanted to live out your, you know, your dream, like your art filled dreams and in which you did. And you really highlighted so many inspiring parts of your story, like in your book, which is amazing and available. If you guys need a good book for your book club, it's called You're So Lucky, which personally, I thought the title itself was gripping because you're very familiar with the phrase in many ways i'm sure and growing up with this kind of 
unwelcome guest being such a big part of your story, how did you kind of come to terms with its presence and overcome it in order to free yourself from being defined by it, you know? Yeah, I think that's definitely not an overnight journey um, and something that took me a little bit of time. And I think it's kind of one of the biggest parts of the cancer and brain tumor journey that people don't realize. It's, you know, this force that you don't have control of is suddenly at the center of your life. And I think not giving something that your entire life is centered around power is an extremely, you know, it's a difficult thing to do because all of a sudden your daily activities all surround this one thing. Yeah. And all those things you thought were so important before it happened, they, they don't matter at all anymore. So I think there is kind of that moment where it does like kind of strip you down from the life, you, like, life, life that you've built and you're kind of like at ground zero. And you have to start reevaluating every phase of your life. Like, how do I want to go to school every day? Do I change jobs? Do I, how do I take care of my family? If you're the sick one and you have kids, like it's such a process. And I've tried to talk with a lot of different people who are fighting this illness through that critical phase. Um, but for me, I think around year two or three is when I really made the conscious decision to start taking myself outside of the illness because that was, you know, I still have my tumor and yeah. I'm at the same place as I was five years ago. But I also think I have a lot of other things in my life that mean so much more to me than being like sad and being in a victim mentality. Yeah. So just being able to see myself separately from the illness and realizing that it did happen to me. So it will affect, you know, small decisions I make and it affects my personality. I don't mm. you know, connect with a lot of people my age. And I think that's why I love the entertainment industry because everyone here is so like mature and business driven. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's not an easy task. I always say your life is a circle and you have events and decisions and you can decide to make something good. It's the best of times and the worst of times at the same time. But I always say it sounds so weird, but it's the best thing that ever happened to me because through it, I found my passion for helping others going through this illness. I found, you know, the work I want to do in the future with Congress and at the White House and got to pursue my artistic dreams, which I probably wouldn't have been able to pack up, you know, and move across the country. Um, I mean, I would have begged my mom, but I'm not sure it would have probably happened in the yeah. way it did. <laughs> you know, having that life changing event, it made me rethink everything and time became a contributing factor. So I did a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have done otherwise. So yeah. I think my mom, my mom always says you can be sad, but you can't be sad for too long. You know, yeah. you can digest that, but then you got to get up, you got to stand up and you got to find your next thing. And I've always been someone who's pretty good at that, but it definitely takes learning. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, I guess there is, I do agree on that in the sense of getting out of our comfort zone is really hard. <laughs> it's just hard for everyone, no matter you know what we're going through. It's this thing of like this, this fear and this insecurity of like, you know, stepping out of it. And what if this is going to do this? What if that's going to change, you know, my, my life route, what I've had planned for myself. But in the end, what my mom tells me is she says something in Spanish called uh, long light, where it's just like to have long light is like to view everything, you know, from the future perspective, like, what is this going to bring to me in the future? What kind of happiness am I going to get in like a couple years? You know what I mean? It's, it doesn't may not be comfortable now, but maybe later on, it's going to be the best thing that could ever happen to you. Yeah. And honestly, I'm so glad you took the step to just go after what your dream is, you know, and kind of pursue the arts. And I mean, now you're an actress as well, um, as well as a model and now a filmmaker, which we'll get to talk about that later. But what are, I don't know, what are some of the most like fun on set experiences you've had? Because I know you worked with uh, Nick Nickelodeon too briefly. Did you get slimed? Like, was that a thing that happened? I, did. I got slimed like multiple times. I still have oh the God. Slimed in, and they said it wouldn't stain, but it is definitely stained. Oh, so sure. I keep it as like a trophy now. Um, but yeah, I worked um, on Fresh Off the Boat when I was younger, and I worked mm. a lot with Nickelodeon too. And so, you know, for me, my whole Nickelodeon phase was kind of happening in that six months of when I first moved out here and was sick. And so it was such a weird time because here I was supposed to be this like bedridden kid that was. Right. Like, like looking forward to like dying and like all of these things. And I was like, God. 
so far from that narrative. Like I was like, I am living in a whole different book. I don't know what happened to yeah. that like, plot twist, but I think, I think for me having that experience and, you know, getting to live my dreams, I was traveling at the same time. I was like, I was traveling to like Europe and like all these things for modeling, which was also something I didn't ever think was going to happen. And it just happened randomly, but to have these lifelong dreams coming true at the same time as like my life falling apart was such a weird phase and a weird six months. But I think me being on set and being around creative people and getting to be a part of that process. That's my, that's why I love film and television is I love seeing something on a script and being able to visualize it with a group of people. And then we come together and we make it real yeah. I think that's like the coolest process ever. And so, you know, Fresh Off the Boat was my first experience doing that. And when I like walked onto the set and it was like not a real school hallway, I like, I had no idea before I was like on set ready to do it. <laughs> Wait, there's no ceiling. And they're like, yeah, we don't film the ceiling. And I was like, oh, oh never. Okay. And so I think getting to like learn on set is like a really weird experience because that's not really how it goes for a lot of people, Mm -hmm. but it got me out of bed every single day. And it was, it was the best of times and the worst. I know I always say that, but it truly was a great time. And that evolved into, you know, being a lot more involved on the business side of things. And it's kind of just, it's grown with me and it's really exciting time, but yeah, yeah. Nickelodeon was that's like because I I feel like I ran into you like through that for a while and then I was like crying in front of you on stage and then (laughs) you know the whole thing but yeah that was so funny when you put it that way because I mean I remember like just it was me (laughs) because everyone in my family is is a medic I'm the one random actress but I mean (laughs) I could play it but um but no my my grandma specifically in that day was so intrigued and like just trying to figure out like that's crazy you know like because your story it called out to so many people and I'm sure I I think you mentioned that I think Harvard Medicine did a study and and different people from different places you know were you know kind of seeing your story which was amazing but I mean differing from that and then it's cool I mean it's cool that we never met each other regarding Nickelodeon because I worked there for like six years (laughs) but I mean I know it's yeah no see the reason I remember like crying on stage is because I don't usually cry I'm always like I don't usually cry when I talk about I still don't cry when I talk about my own story and I'm not sure why that is but I do get very emotional when it comes to other families and parents of those who have lost their kids Mm -hmm. just because I think I viewed it from a 13 year old's perspective, which is an interesting time. So, you know, I was really watching like my mom and her family going through it and losing friends. You know, I saw the parents journey afterwards. So I, I, I usually, I get emotional for the families and that's led me to do a lot of work elsewhere. Um, which has been, you know, busying my Corona vacation too. But, um, so yeah, I think it's, I'm so lucky that I had something that I loved and I got to do that. I I don't know where I would be without my passions and without my art because I, I, yeah. I think having that thing that got me out of bed every day, that's why I survived. And I know that sounds so weird to be like, Oh, my career is like the reason I'm alive, but I know I, I truly think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of artists feel that way because I, I think we put so much of ourselves into it. So yeah. Art, art is healing. No, oh, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, it's therapeutic. It's been therapeutic for me. I'm sure I know it's been immensely therapeutic for you. So, I mean, I just, I love that you've kind of just pursued that. And I mean, not just acting like now, as far as modeling goes, you were teen Vogue's it girl in like 2017, if I remember right. And I thought you fit this title so well, and you are so inspiring, <laughs> especially to young girls. How is it? I don't know. That sounds so exciting. How is it working like a side by side with them? And what are some projects that you created like alongside them? Yeah, I think for me, you know, growing up, the dream always was like children's television space because I knew I could reach kids through there and like fashion magazines because I knew I could reach people in my like kind of demographic through there as well. Right. Um, and so Teen Vogue was always at the top of my list. I swear I manifested my way into that company. I was like, <laughs> me, hire me, hire me, hire me. But, <laughs> did, you know, um, I think it started with a small job working on, I don't even know what it was. People always ask me, they're like, how did you become Teen Vogue? It's it girl. And I was like, I have no idea. I could not tell you what the exact path was to get there. 
that I would work on one thing and that person in that department would then know who I was. And then I would be an influencer for another thing. And that person would know who I was. And I just worked my butt off to get into every meeting, to every event. I was using my miles on Delta to fly to New York to go to Teen Vogue events. Like I was so extra. They had a tour and I was like at every stop across the country. Like I just worked my butt off when I was like 13 because I knew that's what I wanted. Um, and it took like a year maybe of doing that and putting all the effort into it. And they were like, we're doing this new thing where we want the girls to really push the content and tell us what we should be listening about and what we should be doing. Yeah. Um, and this was right when I was kind of coming out of that six months of being really ill. And I was like, this is just like the perfect thing for me. It was a sit down activity that I could do even when I was in bed really sick. Mm. Um, and so I started working for them and then we went on the Teen Vogue Summit tour and then I've been a Nick girl now for, I want to say like three, four years maybe, but it's an incredible experience because I was really a part of that whole, you know, transition and rebranding that Teen Vogue went through Mm -hmm. before, you know, when you flip through the magazines, it was all just ads for very high fashion brands Mm -hmm. of designers as much as the next person fashion will forever be something that I love. And it's a huge part of my personality, but now to be able to open Teen Vogue and read about, you know, disabled athletes and read about girls starting foundations all over the world and follow my journey to the United Nations. And just like the things that they're covering now, it's the future of what our generation is going to be doing and the work they're going to be contributing to this earth. So I think to be a part of that transition and really see the magazine come to life is like something I'll forever remember. And I'm so happy I got to be a part of that. So yeah, it's been, it's been a great gig this past couple of years. Yeah, I mean, that talk about great gigs. Like, of course, <laughs> I just mean, I, and because I've been studying this lately and, um, in the courses that I'm doing, but I, it, that to me means everything to see women kind and, and, and young women specifically to kind of direct their energy and all of their art into projects like these that like what Teen Vogue is doing, because, you know, it, it's something that sometimes it's like, not even within our reach and we don't even know how much potential we have or how much, you know, knowledge we're putting out there. Because when I was younger too, I used to think, Oh my God, okay. These little teeny bopper magazines and stuff like that. Like they don't mean much. That doesn't really shape us. Does it? You know what I mean? Like, does that, you know, seeing these things and these advertisements and the commercials or anything like that, how much really does the media affect my own vision because yeah. and who I am now because I think much more has been you know viewing the women alongside me which for me would be my family but it it does the the, the more we see these messages yeah. as, as and and in, especially during that point where our brain is like a sponge and yeah. we're just absorbing all of these things and the more we talk about and the more we normalize seeing these things you know young girls are like oh women athletes or women like at the UN or women doing this doing that it's like you grow up and you don't grow with you know the 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 oh I may not get there because there might be like a thing because of I'm a woman or maybe because of this or maybe I have to prove myself blah 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 like this okay, maybe years ago, but not anymore. And it shouldn't be this, you know, thing that's going to stop you. And I think it's, it's, it's amazing to have stories like that. Just very real. And just a part of the everyday of what it is to be a young woman is so important to have that out there because uh, trust me, I love Dior and Gucci as much as the next girl, but I mean, (laughs) we need, we need a balance and we, like, there's a difference between wishful thinking and art expression and loving and, almost like the gritty real world and the work that we put into it. People like you in the media, you know, (laughs) people that represent you and represent what you're going through. And I think telling, you know, for me personally, the work I've always worked on for Teen Vogue specifically was around telling the stories that were happening like behind closed doors. And I think I talk about this a lot, you know, for me walking down the street, people don't know what I go through. You know, they don't see the symptoms of the brain tumor. They don't see the management that I have to do on a daily basis to make sure I can go and work and do what I love and get out of bed. You know, that's a full-time job on its own. And I think that's why I've always been so open about it is because it is such an invisible illness for me. You know, no one knows if I didn't choose to share it. And Mm. I've met so many people who have chosen not to share it. And I come across their stories in the randomest way, you know, me being vocal, I met my best friend in science class when I was going to school and I was like, Oh, brain tumor. And she was like, I had a brain tumor and I had known her for like ever. And I had no idea. And I think 
being able to focus on these women and profile them and tell their stories, you know, people that just look like they're walking down the street, everyday people, and they have these incredible experiences that have shaped them and driven them. I think those for me are the kind of the stories that I'm really interested in sharing and reading and writing. So yeah, that's, it's been a really incredible experience. I've met so many incredible girls who are doing insane things that you would never know about if we didn't have the platform to share it on. So yeah, yeah. giving Um, people platforms that need it. Yeah, no, it's incredibly important. And that's why I really like the panels that we get to go to too. I mean, obviously nowadays yeah. it's been a little difficult and maybe now we're doing <laughs> Zoom panels, which are great. Yeah. But I mean, in that panel that I met you on, you know, I got to see so many sides of you and I got to, I mean, you were crying, yes, but I mean, it was just <laughs> more than anything, what I remembered was your power and kind of your story and your love for the arts. And I think I remember something you said, it's a, a fun fact, unless my brain is like completely just not remembering, right? But I think you at one point did like aerials, you were part of a circus, something yeah. like that. Yes, that's so cool. Like what? Yeah, I, it was a really weird experience how I ended up a part of Circus Juventus was the circus that I was a performer in. Um, I grew up in Minnesota and I grew up about a half hour away from the largest youth performing arts circus in North America, which is a, re- a very lucky experience. I don't know how that happened, but a lot of the kids train up in Canada. So it's like a very close location to that. Um, mm-hmm. Because is based in Canada for their training facilities. Um, so I, I saw a show there when I was like six years old and I was like, I'm going to do this, whatever it takes. I kind of have a lot of passions like that in life. Yeah. Um, a lot of like, she probably shouldn't do that or can't do that, but she's going to try anyways. And I yes. always thought, um, but I started taking the summer camps and then I started taking random classes there when I got older. And by the age of, I want to say like 12, right before I got sick, I was, you know, performing with them in August. We did like 30 shows in a month. We do like two to three a day. Sometimes it was like so crazy, but I think that environment was really where I started falling in love with scripting and costuming and blocking and the performance element of acting. And it was also a lot of adults that not only inspired me, but also encouraged me to be creative and be artistic. I grew up going to like a very strict school. Like we had to wear uniforms and like everyone had to get A's and I was very hard on myself when it came to school as well. Um, so to be able to go to a place after school where kids had opinions and got to be celebrated for being an individual, I think that's really where my art and my passions really started to come to life. And I was figure skating at the same time too. My, my schedule was crazy. Um, but I was, you know, again, there it was choreography and costuming and, you know, learning the elements of what it means to be a team and have that production at like competitions. So I think, although I went through a lot of different phases and sports and activities to get to where I am today, I think they all had elements of acting and film production in them. And I love this whole process of having something kind of be forever when it is put on film. Mm. So um, that's where, you know, my passion started developing and I ended up here and I think it's like the perfect balance of all of it. Cause unfortunately, you know, after I got sick, I was getting really dizzy and having headaches all the time. So like flying 30 feet in the air on a trapeze wasn't like realistic anymore. Unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> not ideal, but you know, so I I had this kind of phase where I didn't know anymore. You know, circus had been five days a week and skating was the other two. And I was booked every hour of the day. And I thought it was so important. You know, I was five minutes late and I would be so mad the entire practice. (laughs) I think after, you know, the diagnosis, all those things suddenly didn't matter like they did the day before. And I had to start finding sit down activities, whatever that meant to me. And, you know, things I could do from bed when I was sick. And that's when Teen Vogue started coming along and I started preparing to move to LA. So it it was an awkward transition at times, but I think I, those days really helped me build my, you know, skills for what I do now. So I'm forever grateful for that whole experience. Uh, I, miss, I miss those kids. I love the circus. It's I, fun. That just sounds amazing. I love the circus. I love so why. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so cool. And I mean, it's it's nice to find all those things that, like you said, like sit down jobs or like these, you know, passions that you can still carry on. You know, without 
without it being completely harsh on you physically. And I mean, now I think what you're doing, you know, what better way than to say I, in the beginning, I did introduce you as the CEO of Great Inc. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. She is a young <laughs> boss lady, which Great Inc. She just tried. celebrated their first anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. I know. I cannot believe it's been an entire year, but yeah, very great. Oh, I don't know. This is a, time's going a little too fast for, for my liking, but I, at the same time, I want it to go fast right now, but yeah, uh, ugh, it's a, it's a weird balance, but I mean, I don't know. It, it's cool to see you grow and manage your own company, you know, especially now being able to do it all from home and just kind of take care of everything. Almost, almost, you know, well, almost everything yourself. And I mean, what was the kind of the start of gray ink? I haven't ever been able to teach like uh, just really get all the details of like, what was the initial idea and mission behind gray ink? Yeah. So for me, Gray Inc., by the way, is a luxury marketing and media company. Um, we also focus on like shareholdings of luxury fashion brands, um, which is kind of our way of managing the fashion industry from the inside out and kind mm -hmm. of seeing what the next steps are in fashion and in travel and in luxury. Um, but I found myself wanting to do things, you know, just a little bit deeper from like the film production side of things. And I was doing a lot of campaigns for like brands from an influencer standpoint, mm. but I was having too many ideas as an influencer alone. You know, I was wanting to create these entire worlds and campaigns for these brands that wanted to work with me. And um, at the time with my like teen Vogue work, so gray was a way for me to build a company that could do multiple things in the production side of things and social media and kind of help these luxury brands develop a voice on platforms such as like Instagram and in digital and in the film space. Um, so it kind of just, it really all came together really randomly. I was doing work technically like doing gray work before gray existed. And then we were like, we just need a company to house all of this work. And I think the actual branding was only like a week of brainstorming. And within that week we were like, okay, like it's good. You know what I mean? Cause the services yes. were always like happening, you know? And since then we've had a lot of different projects with the big brands. Like um, we worked with fear of God and pack sun, which was like incredible. Cause yeah, I always get to come up with, the weirdest things like we did a snow white one in like a castle and i had one where i was like i need an airplane on fire and everyone was like this girl is insane i was like no i am going to have an airplane that is on fire and i'm going to be standing in front of it with a space helmet on and they're like my yes. teeth like and i was like we're trying to shoot it and everyone's like oh my but it turned out so cool and <laughs> able to have, being able to have those worlds kind of come to life is something that I love so much. It's the same thing as film, you know, having that kind of come to life. Um, so it's kind of a company that encompasses all the stuff I've already wanted to do, like our young Hollywood project yes. that is a part of, um, so our big focus project this year, it, it's not even about, you know, making money or doing it with a specific brand. It's really more, I just wanted to have a passion project each year that I really focused on. And for me, what has always inspired me is my peers. Like I said, I think I said this earlier, I've had a hard time kind of connecting to kids my age because of what I've been through and my work. And I think a lot of other kids in the entertainment industry feel the same way. And I've met so many incredible kids that approach the entertainment industry like Lil Amar from a very unique perspective. You know, the reason they do what they do is not for the reason that a lot of people do what they do in this entertainment industry. Um, they do what they do for the love of the art and for building a platform that they can reach other kids from all over the world. And so the young Hollywood list was for, a, it was a way for us to kind of take all of these kids and put them in one room together and I photographed um, 30 kids and we launched that in March, I believe. Um, and then we have yet to have our big launch party, which because of COVID um, was canceled, but I, we will have it one day and, Yay, you know, so to have all these for kids. Too. I mean, ah. I know, I know we're having like this young, we're having like an old Hollywood theme and I had like a mob boss suit, which leads us into this. <gasps> you didn't I know. even tell me this. I would have been so extra. Oh my God. No. Let me 
let me stop. We're going to have it. I, I, I still have the space. I still have the event space. We're going to do it one day because for me to have, you know, a room full of 30 kids who all are doing their art from that like pure place of love. I think that would be such an incredible experience. And that's really the vision I had from it for like from the beginning, it was, you know, the photographs are fun and the digital platform and social media attention is great. But to have these kids be able to be in the same room, I just think the ideas and the experiences and the projects that could come out of that room would just be so incredible. So I look forward to that project being back in full force soon. Yes. And I loved the, the kind of the, the thought process and the movement behind that project because it was, it's the more we introduce audiences to very true artists, to very passionate artists, to people that really, really love their craft and really want to put out something, you know, so positive and so therapeutic. And so, you know, that gets you thinking it's yeah. better. Like the more audiences can get this type of content that really inspires them. That really makes them feel like they're the, 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 the intake of media and data and everything that's going. It's, it's the majority of things are great. The majority of things are making them think out of the box. The majority yeah. they know is coming from a genuine place because I, you know, you and I both, we've met, we're young and then, you know, I think we get this all the time of like, you, oh, you're, 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 what is it? You're such an, what is it? Old heart or something like that. I don't know. Young, yeah. young body. Old soul. <laughs> same thing i don't know but it's it's you know you have kind of this 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 passion for for this thing that seems beyond your years and at, it's just because it comes so genuinely we love what we do and we pursue it and there's really going to be no one that's going to step in just because and take us out from that, you know, and there's so many people that, you know, like I said, you and I have met that do it for the wrong purposes, as you said, or, you know, like money or the fame or this and that. all of it is so unstable. It, it is really, that's why, you know, they go up so quick and then, you know, kind of like foam, they just dissipate and yeah. disappear. And then it's, it's this, this kind of journey. And then this kind of constant struggle of, I want my, quote unquote clout back. I want this power back. It's the search for, for power and money and recognition and all these things. And it's like, for us, we, it's almost, you know, in a way, like we don't really care for the recognition. It's more of like, we know that this is going to, it, it, it touched our hearts. It made us happy. We know it's going to do the same for someone in the world. And it, it just, it's making us happy. And in the end, in the long run, you know, thinking with long light, it, there's going to be fruition and there's going to be something very beautiful left behind. So yeah. it was, it was really, really nice. And it was amazing energy in that place to see kind of all these kids that I knew and, and didn't know come together yeah. and just kind of put their best like magazine faces on right me <laughs> like be like here I am here's my story and like it's oh amazing. my gosh I feel like I really I was like I'm going to push everyone to do like a serious grace weather face because I have a Man. hard time like smiling in photos and everyone like people came so prepared like uh Bryce one of our friends he came like in a full suit he was like I knew this is what I had to wear I was like thank you for yes. sticking with the theme sir but I, yeah I think it was such an incredible thing to photograph everyone. And like you were saying earlier about like the reasoning behind our why for me, I think acting and, you know, art and directing and all of these other things, these are like talents that I've been given. And the fact that I can use my talents to then build the platform to share, you know, a message that's even closer to my heart, which is brain tumor awareness. And then using that platform to go do things like, from a legal standpoint in the white house and at the UN and just to teach kids all over the world that they are not their situation or illness. I think, I think that's really the messaging behind my work. The art is great and I love it that I get to do it every day, but to show kids that you can achieve anything, no matter where you come from, no matter what you've been through or what you go through on a daily basis, that doesn't stop you from doing what you love. And this is what I love. You may love, animals you may want to be an astronaut and just because you come from a place where that's not seen as a normal thing that doesn't mean you can't do it and i hope that my story stands as you know an example of that and i hope that with the platform i'm given i can do incredible things for the brain tumor you know community specifically but it's a lot bigger than brain tumors i always say that i'm like 
my story is a brain tumor, but if you take away, you know, the exact situation, there's a lot of people just like me out there who have, you know, overcome things and use that as a way to drive them towards, you know, their goals. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a hard process, but it's something that I find is my responsibility to do. So yeah. yeah, no, and I think it's beautiful the more we get to find these stories. I think because of quarantine, we've all been slightly connecting a little bit more, I want to say. It's because, you know, yeah, everyone's kind of at a stop and kind of checking the same social medias. And it's now as if oh, not we're in the same room, but we're in the same Twitter feed. We're in the same Instagram feed. And now we're seeing each other more and hearing others' opinions more, which sometimes it's destructive and sometimes could be really great because I think we're finding and, and, and hearing so many stories of people that got to these amazing places and are doing these really yeah. cool things. And they had, you know, the quote unquote, uh, barrier or, or, or wall that that was stopping them that it was it was either a you know mental health or an illness or because of their race or because of where they come from their neighborhood their point of view their religion whatever and yeah. these massive things that for so long and for so many years have really been like what defined us no longer are we are defining who we are we are defining our journeys and where we want to go and i think the more we have that in our mind when we're young and the more we feel inspired and motivated so that's why i wanted to do even something like this during quarantine not only to feel protected yeah. but also just to you know i have this group of amazing friends that you know are not like i don't know 5 million followers or blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's, it's people that I wish more people would listen to and just talk to and kind of see what they're doing. Cause it's amazing. And especially at such a young age too. Yeah, no, I, that's why when you asked me to be on, I was like, that's, I would absolutely love to, because I think, you know, I'm very lucky to have a platform within, you know, teen Vogue and within the other work I have. But I think to you know, have people like you who really want to tell the stories of other people that don't get shown as much. I think that's so important because I think even those small stories, sometimes those are the ones that leave the biggest impact because yeah. to them, to like you, you resonate with them even more. And I think to have, to know that there's people in the industry like you who are giving a platform to people and want to hear those stories, that really makes me happy and inspired because I think, you know, it's so hard, I feel like, to get things heard a lot of times just because mm -hmm. everyone is wrapped up in their own life. And I don't blame yeah. anyone. I think I'm wrapped up in my own life, too. You know, <laughs> we're in our own perspective 100% of the time. So it's hard not to see yourself as the main character, you know. But yeah, exactly. I, you know, even with everything that's happening in the world right now, having that opportunity to reach people in a unique way, I think is actually such an incredible thing. I I've been doing a lot of work, um, where you've been at Congress. Um, we were there in person last year, but now everything is online. Um, yeah. and we're fighting for a new house resolution, which will be in support of, um, DIPG brain cancer. And even just having these congressmen and women on these zoom calls with us, actually paying attention to what we're saying. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm an 18 year old girl from Minnesota. Like, why are you listening to me? You know, but to be able to have this time because everyone is working from home and yeah. looking for that thing to be inspired by, to get to speak to these people in a place that I wouldn't usually have that connection to be able to do. Yeah. It's and it's such an incredible time. And I think we can make some real change during this time when everyone is stepping back and reevaluating what is really important. You know, that's what I had to do five years ago when I was diagnosed. And I feel like the world is kind of doing it as a whole right now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's a hard time, but I think some really incredible things will come out of this whole thing. Yeah. I mean, Hopefully. speaking of incredible things, because I do <laughs> want to see the silver lining in everything. I am pathetically positive in almost every situation especially now, but we are actually working on a very exciting project together in these moments and we're all hush hush right now. But is there anything you can share that yeah. can get everyone excited for yeah. the creation of this project? Totally. I was talking to Lori this morning. We went to the Gucci restaurant because it's open and we were like, Gucci is a restaurant. We wanted to try it. Yes, um, I actually but did I was not know. <laughs> Yeah, 
it's on their Rodeo store. They like opened a whole restaurant and it's outside. Um, so it's open right now, but we were sitting at this Gucci restaurant. That sounds so extra, but we were, um, and we were talking and I was like, what can I say on, you know, a little more show? And she was like, go for it. So basically, um, Lilamar and I are working on a new film together called Mad World. Yes. And the film follows um, celebrity designer Nicole Sassman as she navigates her way throughout five different crazy worlds. Um, very Alice in Wonderland, like Wizard of Oz, Old Hollywood. Um, and so I am co-directing the film with a mentor of mine named Lori Levenfeld, who has been incredibly supportive of my work over these past five years and really helped me when I was, you know, at my lowest, my illness point. Um, and so to get to work on this project side by side with her is so incredible. And we co-wrote the entire script together. And Miss Lillimar is in one of our worlds. Um, she lives in the 1920s, like speakeasy world. Um, she is this boss lady who just like runs the show um, and I'm so excited because we, we took a really interesting approach with this script. We, I, I, I don't know why we did this, but it just felt right. We casted first and then wrote the script around the people that we casted. And I've been wanting to work with Lilamar in a more professional sense for a long time because I just love you've always been someone who's been really involved in like the character breakdowns and we've talked about scripts before and you love, you just love film and that's how I am too. And we tried to make the entire cast and crew people who just love film and love to watch films and, you know, be a part yeah. of that experience. Um, so yeah, we, we got Lilamar on board and then we wrote this character around her and she's just this powerhouse that runs the show. <laughs> she's my boss queen. So I'm I... so excited to like get on set with you. We're, we're in the final stages of like pre-production and we're supposed to be going, you know, into production in a couple weeks. Yes. At August, so. And then all of the preparations for COVID and having everyone yeah. super safe. And I don't know, it's been great because for me, it's a, I don't know, this came out of nowhere and you were just like, I have a great project. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is awesome. And, and when I, when you first told me about it, I was very interested and I loved the very, um, Hadid dinner style of yeah. that, where it was going to be this mixture of high fashion with a really gripping story about, you know, almost documentary, but just more fantastical. Yeah. And it's just about the beauty of this woman's career and artist artistry and life. And I was so excited to get to know her and get to know the story. And I mean, for you, I, it, this is one of these people that you can't really trust many people in LA, especially ones of our age, because there are some that are very, very driven and, but you know, will not answer their emails. And it's, just, I can't, yeah. <laughs> like, I, to me, it's like, you are one of the very few that I trust to do always such a good job and aim for, you know, you, for us, we aim for perfection, quote unquote, but in the end, it's just a project that shows that it's good quality and we love it. And we put so much love and effort into it. And I knew that that was going to be exciting. At first I was like, okay, so no script, but this sounds really interesting <laughs> yeah, no, I like where this is going yes. I love what you're telling me right now I can't <laughs> wait to see it and then when I when I, I read a bit of it today and kind of started doing my character breakdown and I just I thought it was great I've always wanted to do a character like that as well so that's yeah. kind of nice for my excitement but <laughs> for villain yeah I think it's it's such a weird time right now because everything was at such a standstill and you know the industry and I was feeling like very weird because there was all this pressure, especially on social media, to be productive. And yeah. I remember I saw this tweet a couple times and I, I really loved it. They're like, just so you know, you don't have to build a rocket during quarantine. Like, yeah. no, it, no one is forcing you to get to the moon by the time we go back to work. Right. And I think really doing that and realizing, oh, okay, this is time to sit back and reflect and take time off from the daily life that we like have now been forced to stop living for a bit. Right. Um, and from that, so many creative things come, you know, this whole film started as like a product line for Nicole, which, you know, is such a weird concept, but then to be able to, you know, make this film that tells the stories of a woman, you know, standing up for herself and using her words for good. It's such a timely thing. And just all the people who are working on this film, I am so excited because everyone is so creative and so inspirational. And like you said, 
it's a crew full of kids and adults. I call everyone kids. I it's know. a crew full of young I people, know, like older people who want to do incredible things and want to build each other up. I think that's one, you know, misconception in this industry. I think a lot of people kind of work on their career as an individual because it is such a competitive industry. And I totally see where that's coming from, but I found the more I let down that guard of competitiveness and being an individual, and I've started becoming like a group entity, things happen so much faster because you have other people speaking on your behalf and advocating for you. And I've become a huge advocate for everyone that I've worked with on projects. Cause I just, I love to see people like do cool things. Yes. So I think, you know, taking away that wall of like individuality and making it like a group project in the industry yes. and not necessarily just this film, but like how you live life. I think that's such an interesting concept. And it took me, you know, a little bit of maturing to realize that, but I think, you know, it's, it's so much, if you build other people up, they're going to build you up with them. And I know that's that such like true. a simple like thing, but I think it's so true, especially it's, in this industry. Yeah. It's very important. Some of these concepts that we talk about a lot of the times are very, very simple and very simple times you're just like, this is common sense. But the problem is that common sense is very hard for a lot of people to understand, grip onto, and fully understand the complexity of it. It's not just, you know, self-esteem or, you know, working together or doing this. There's a whole world of education within these things that it's like, no, this concept is way more important than we are, you know, making it out to be. And I think that's something I learned coming to LA as well. It's, it's this thing of like, you know, I've always been thinking of like, you know, everyone is here is very, very sweet, very, very nice, but ultimately it's a competition. And ultimately we all want something from each other and, Mm -hmm. and people step on each other to get there. And you can't take away the mm, dark and gritty side of the industry, but in the end, what makes it so beautiful, what makes it progress actually is that sense of we're all working together because we all need each other. We all need yeah. to find each other. An actor depends on a casting director, a producer. The, that producer depends on somebody else. Like somebody depends on financing. Like this other person, oh, I would really love to get to this section. That best friend that you have is going to be the one that loves you and advocates for you. And it's not going after each other in the sense that you benefit me. It's just that you can do for me what I would love to do for you. And yeah. it's, it's, it's this thing of like, we're a team and we're a group and we're all ultimately interconnected. And, and when you put it in that sense, it's like, Oh, I, I'm not alone and I have help and I don't have to see everyone as my enemy and that they're coming to get totally. my place or for my status. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it, I think it's a hard thing to see because there is so much writing on it, especially in, you know, this industry um, and on your work. But I think, I totally agree with that. I think it's a time for us to like build each other up and like it is, you know, technically a competition, but like, so is a normal nine to five office job and people (laughs) act civilized in those usually. (laughs) Usually. I I think it is, you know, an interesting time, but I do think more and more the industry, you know, it's not fair and it probably never will be a hundred percent fair. Um, but I think it is such a great time because I think people are starting to be recognized for who they are as people and what they do outside of their art. So yes, blah, blah, blah is a great actress or a great actor, but what they're advocating for and their platform outside of that, that's really important. And there's just so many people who are in the spotlight who are doing incredible things for causes outside of this. I think it's such a great time for people to tell their stories and not just be a face on the screen. Yeah. And that's why I'm really excited to see this industry like grow. We have a lot of work to go, but I think we've made a lot of progress too. Yes. Yes. And I love when I see and I interact with people that see that because in a way I just, I, I, I sense, you know, this positivity and the sense of like, you know, we, we did this or we've been able to do this or like, I feel like this. So we have so much more to go. So I, I, I love seeing that. And I, that's why I reason 
that I, I, one of the big reasons why I wanted to bring you on here, because I knew you were going to say all these things and we get lost <laughs> and rant and talk about things, but it's things that we're super passionate about. And, you know, we could give, I don't know, a different perspective, a different worldview to a lot of people coming in here. So in the end, it's just, I am so happy with this and I'm so happy with everything that we talked about and getting to know, you know, for all of the people for the friendship circle, getting to know you and, and seeing you and hopefully keep, you know, staying there and supporting your work and supporting our future projects. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. This is such an incredible, you know, experience and platform. And yeah, like we were saying earlier, it's such a great time to share other people's stories and I'm excited we get to work together and do this together. It's, it's a very fun time of growth and change and transition, which seems scary, but we're all going through the same thing. So I think it's a very exciting time. Yeah. So it's a very, very beautiful time. It's, it's mother nature telling us to, you know, grow up go a little bit. Down. Humanity needs to go through a little bit of puberty. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Put in your room, sit down. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> But yes, thank you so, so much for being on here and talking with me and hopefully everyone, you know, we'll get to learn something today and, <laughs> and get inspired and feel positive during this time in quarantine. We still have a little bit to go, but stay, stay there. You know, we're, we're, we're progressing. We're doing things. So yes, thank you for coming. You guys, please keep track of Grace. She's doing very, very big things. Please look forward to our project. You can follow Grace. I have her username right there, at Grace Weather. And please, please look <laughs> at her book, which is available in Barnes & Noble and Amazon. It's called You're So Lucky. And yes, please keep an eye on my girl and her company, Grey Inc. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I adore you so much. I can't wait to see you in person very soon with a mask on. But yes, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank, thank you for being a part of the friendship circle today. Bye bye.